Hey guys, we're getting ready for King of the Mountain Tournament number four, and we decided to put together a compilation video of all the qualifying races. That's over an hour of yours truly. I think you mean that's over an hour of solid modified car racing action. And to thee. So without any further interruptions, here's the entire qualifying round for King of the Mountain Tournament number four. It's King of the Mountain Tournament number four, qualifying race one. Up first, we have Ryan Titmus driving in, filled to the brim. All the cars in tonight's race will be a 2008 Lancer Evolution. A battle of the Evos. These will be the only Evos you will see in tournament number four. Except for Terrence Jr., right? Well, he's the king of the mountain. Next, we have Speedzilla driving in, Old Yeller. With a name like Speedzilla, all I know is that car better be fast. Old Yeller weighs in at 100.5 grams. You don't mean we're gonna keep that old ugly Yeller dog after what he's done? Up next we have Whoa. Griffin Racing driving in Whoa. Rainbow Evo Power. I almost bit my drink out there. That is one colorful car. I think they asked him what color he wanted his car, and he said yes. Rainbow Evo Power, that sounds like an 80s cartoon superpower. Let's do it. Really? Yeah. Rainbow, Rainbow Evo, Evo Power! Power. You know, I actually feel different That's now. the shame setting in. And last up, we have Big Romy driving in concrete. Now, did he just put concrete yeah, all over his car? I think so. Well, that's one way to get your weight up. Hopefully, it doesn't drive like concrete. Also, we're going back to the four-race format for the qualifying round of King of the Mountain Tournament number four. So, the fifth race is gone. Yes, four cars, four races, and they'll rotate position between each race. Here they go. They are off. Speedzilla in the lead. This is the first time we've had four Evos on the track at one time. It should be some good racing. Big Romy and Ryan Titmus battling for second. Speedzilla spins around, going in reverse oh, now. We got a three-car pileup. Speedzilla still moving, going backwards. He's doing a jimmy. And Speedzilla takes the checkered flag on race one, followed by Big Romy. Oh! Ouch. I think Griffin Racing just saw all the colors of the rainbow. A lot of bumping and door banging down here at the finish line. These guys seem competitive. Let's see the hit again by Speedzilla. Here comes Griffin Racing. Boom! So much for a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. No pot of gold for Griffin Racing, just Speedzilla backing into him. Speedzilla may have a career in the Diecast Demolition Derby. Let's see it one more time. Boom! What's in your wallet? I'm glad you asked because this race is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet, the official sponsor of King of the Mountain Tournament number four. When I go to check out, there's only one wallet that I reach for. And that's the ridge. Okay, I'm not even gonna ask. Oh, Just yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, baby. Holds up to 12 cards plus cash. If you don't love it, you can send it back. Because Ridge will let you test drive one of these bad mamma gemmas for 45 days. They got over 40,000 five star reviews and a lifetime warranty. So tell me, what are you waiting for? Just head on over to ridge.com forward slash 3D botmaker and use the promo code 3DBOTMAKER to save 10% off your order. That's uh, ridge.com forward slash 3DBOTMAKER and use the promo code 3DBOTMAKER to save 10% off your order. Here we go with race two. We have Speedzilla back again out in the front. So far, he is living up to the name Speedzilla. Big Romy and Ryan Tipness battling for second. Big Romy's gaining. He's going on the inside. Big Romy with a huge overtake. He leaves Speedzilla sideways as he takes the win with a fast time. 16.614 seconds. He must have used the quick dry concrete on that car. That was some awesome driving by Big Romy. First, he overtook Ryan Titmus on turn two, and then just watch this right here, laser focused on that inside lane. Speedzilla must have not been paying attention to his rear view mirror. And then look at that exit for Big Romy out of that last turn. A bump into the sidewall, but he made it past that finish line with a fast time. You know, I'm wondering, is it Big Romy or Big Romy? I'm, I'm not really sure. Maybe but it's like Romy ramen noodles, or is it like Romy like homie? I'm just going to go with Romy. I like ramen. The ramen bomber would be an awesome name for a car. That's Min Min. Huh? Min Min. Min Min from ARMS is the ramen bomber. Oh, that's right. She was one of my favorites. With the dragon arm. Yeah, that's sweet. That game was so underrated. Yeah, but if you had to pick ARMS or Smash. Smash because Min Min is in Smash. It's literally the best of both worlds. This time, Big Romy Romy is out in the front. Speedzilla in second place. Big Romy going for win two. He is fast out of that last corner. And that right there is two wins for Big Romy driving in concrete. Speedzilla takes second on that one. Griffin Racing comes in third, and we lost Ryan Titmus over on turn two. Looking at the scoreboard, the real race here is between Big Romy and Speedzilla. There's only a three-point difference between the two. This race started off looking like Speedzilla was the car to beat, but now Big Romy appears to be the dominant driver. That is the power of concrete, my friend. 
That car is fast like concrete. Okay, first you said concrete was slow. Now you're saying it's fast. It can be both depending on the circumstance. We've also had some very fast times tonight. Big Romy clocked a 16.568 second time on that last race. That's what happens when you put four Evos on the track. Yes, and once again, for all those who are tired of the Mitsubishi Evo. The great and mighty Evo. This will be the only Evos in the qualifying round right here. We put them all in this one race. The remaining qualifying races will be Mitsubishi Evo free. Here we go with the final race. This time we have Griffin Racing and Ryan Titmus in the front row. Ryan Titmus taking the lead in the black and red Evo. Look at Speedzilla. Speedzilla moves into second, he loses control. It's all Ryan Titmus now. Oh, oh Ryan oh. Titmus falls over. I spoke too soon. And the other three drivers all get stuck before the turn. I think there's something off with the balance on Ryan Titmus' car. Speedzilla blocking everyone else. Since no one finished, we will be restarting this race. Let's try to see where things went wrong. I think it probably all started in a garage somewhere when Ryan Titmus built that car. Well, tonight certainly has not been his night. That is an understatement. He had a massive lead right here and then just... Wow. How does that even happen? He had the inside line. I think there's a term for it. It's called not knowing how to drive. Well, that's kind of harsh. But it's true. Here we go with the restart of race four. Griffin Racing driving in the Rainbow, Rainbow Evo, Evo power. power. And Ryan Titmus in the 76 car. It's a close group going into turn one. The two fastest cars in the rear. Ryan Timmis with a slight lead. Speedzilla is on his tail. Everyone makes it out of turn two. Ryan Timmis way down the track now. Don't fall over. He comes flying out of turn three. Wow, that was fast. Oh, there goes Rainbow Evo Power. Ryan Timmis finally gets a good run, but that was too little too late. Go Big Romy. And Big Romy will be advancing onto the tournament by one point over Speedzilla. Romy Rome. It really all came down to that pass he made on race two. That right there was the determining factor. That is the power of concrete. It's King of the Mountain tournament number four, qualifying race two. Up first, we have Eric driving in the Vandalorian. The Vandalorian is a Ford Transit Supervan weighing 97.5 grams. I wonder if Baby Yoda's inside. Well, if he is, the only force allowed in this race is gravity. Up next, we have the Madcap Romanian driving in Monster Hobbies Mobile. The Monster Hobbies Mobile is a super van weighing 104.7 grams. Is it me or does this seem like a shameless plug for Monster Hobbies? It does seem like he just slapped a sticker on the side. Then we have Peter Lemongello driving in Midnight Express. The Midnight Express is a Chrysler Pacifica weighing 97.8 grams. Looks like he's ready for some off-roading. Hopefully he keeps it on the road because we don't need another van driver driving off the cliff. And last up we have Joe Quixotic. Don't look at me, it doesn't matter if we get it right or wrong. The Tire King driving in Bullet Side. The Bullet Side is a Datsun 620 weighing 102.1 grams. Here we go at the start of race one. The madcap remaining out in front in the Monster Hobbies Mobile. He is way ahead of everyone else. This isn't even a race. Here he comes around turn two. Looks like Joe Quixotic is back there in second. This race is over, whoa! I think you mean the Monster Hobbies Mobile is over. Here comes Joe Quixotic, and he will take the win on race one. Wow, that's an upset. The madcap remaining had such a big lead, and he blew it all on the final turn. Peter Lemongello gets stuck behind the madcap Romanian. And there's Eric in the Vandalorian. Clearly the force was not with him. Let's see what happened on turn two. Right there, he gets forced off the side of the road. And here's a look at what happened on turn three with the Madcap Romanian. He was looking good and then... Wow, he did not handle that turn well at all. Also, if that's a mobile unit for Monsters Hobbies, he must have merchandise all over the place in that van. Yeah, that's gonna be an inventory nightmare. And here we go, race two, the Madcap Romanian and Joe Quixotic in the front row. Joe currently in the lead by five points. Madcap Romanian back out in front. He's definitely faster than everyone else. He just needs to keep it on all fours. Here he goes, sliding through two. The driver's currently in the same order they were in in the first race. He made it out of turn three. The Madcap Romanian handles the turn, takes the win with a time of 17.102 seconds. Oh, what happened to Peter? He has wrecked into the tire pile, and here comes a straggler. It's Eric in the Vandalorian. It's nice to see him finish, but this is not the way to win the race. This is not the way. There's Peter Lemongello wrecked into that pile of tires. Does that van say Titmus on the bottom? Uh, yes it does. I wonder if he's related to Ryan Titmus from the last race. I'm guessing he probably is. 
the madcap Romanian with a strong win here. If he can stay on his tires, I think he's got this race. Some paint swapping going on between Eric and Peter. Here he goes. Boom. I was waiting to see that. And see, that's why the tires were there to break his fall. You know, I'm glad to see safety has become a priority for you. Yeah, talk to me about that after the first episode of the Demolition Derby. Well, that's different. That's controlled chaos. It's not controlled at all. Well, that's what waivers are for. Joe Quixotic currently in the lead with eight points. He's starting in the pole position on his outside is Peter Lemon Jello. Lemon Jello? Are you saying Lemon Jello? Well, I might not have. I think it might be Lemon Jello. Well, you're the first one who said Lemon Jello, so I'll go with that. Oh, 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 there goes Matt Capromanian. He cannot keep that van up. Upright, and here comes Joe Quixotic to take his second win, followed by Peter Lemon Yellow. I don't see the Vandalorian down here. He could probably just sit this race out. I'm sure he's stuck somewhere over on turn two. The Mad Cap Romanian, such a disappointment. He's so fast. He just really sucks as a driver. Hey, there's Eric. He made it to turn three. Where is Baby Yoda when you need him? Maybe he's the one driving the van. That would explain things. Let's see what happened between Joe Quixotic and the Mad Cap Romanian. Right here, they got tangled up together. Ooh, he hit the wall. That spun him around and knocked him right out of the race. We've got one race to go. Joe Quixotic in the lead. He has 13 points. The Madcap Romanian in second with five points. You could stick and fork in this race because it is done. Joe Quixotic will be advancing on to tournament number four. So we don't even really need to run this race. It's three vans and a truck. I need to see what happens on the fourth race. Maybe the Vandalorian will get a win. <laughs> ah, <laughs> the Vandalorian. Oh, man. Peter Lamangelo out in front, followed by Joe Quixotic. Quixotic looking for the pass. The round turn two. Peter's back and gets way out behind him. Here comes Joe. Joe Quixotic takes the lead. Madcap Romanian with the overtake on the last turn. Oh, what a race. And the Madcap Romanian will take the win. That was a nice one. It doesn't really matter, but that was still an awesome race. The lead changed twice at the end. Joe Quixotic gets 16 points in the qualifying race. He will be moving on to tournament number four of King of the Mountain. But look at this race right here. Peter Lamangelo out in front. Joe Quixotic pushes his van out of the way, but look at the madcap Romanian. Saw the opening on the final turn and took it. That was just beautiful racing. It's a real shame he didn't do better in the earlier races because Monster Hobbies Mobile was a fast van. It doesn't do you any good to be fast if you can't finish. Is that a quote from someone? No, I think I just made that up. Dude, that's like an epic phrase you just came up with right now. We need to get that on a shirt. I'll get on that right now. Steve, call Susan. We got a winner. It's King of the Mountain Tournament number four, qualifying race three. Up first, we have Jensen driving in Luminacity. It's a Chevy Lumina Stalker weighing 111.4 grams. Then we have Derek Wooden driving in Yellow Tanuki. The Yellow Tanuki is a Nissan Skyline GTR R32 weighing 106.7 grams. Driving in the AKR is Hunter Meyer. It's a 2012 Ford Fiesta weighing 68.3 grams. And last up we have Pumpkin driving in Baby Blue. The Baby Blue is a Toyota RSC weighing 74.9 grams. The drivers will compete in four races. The top driver will advance on to King of the Mountain Tournament number four. We've got Jensen starting off on the front right and Derek Wooden on the front left. Derek Wooden leading them down the first straight. Jensen close behind in second place. Hunter Meyer right on the back of Jensen's car. Here they go through turn two. Derek Wooden still with a solid lead here. There's a battle for second place going on. Hunter trying to find a way to pass back there. And Derek Wooden takes the win on race one, followed by Jensen, Hunter Meyer, and Pumpkin. A pretty clean race there and a clean win for Derek Wooden. Not too much of a gap though between all the drivers. Yeah, they were actually all pretty close there. Derek Wooden able to keep the competition in his back pocket. Hey, I know they're a sponsor, but I'm actually a big fan of the Ridge Wallops. Well, it definitely comes across in your presentation. You know, you should try singing sometime, too. I don't think the fans want to hear that. Oh, sure they do. Derek Wooden back in the lead, going around turn two. Jensen back there blocking traffic. That leaves Derek Wooden wide open for the win here, and this is going to be an easy one for him. Two wins in a row for Derek Wooden in the Yellow Tanuki. Jensen takes second place. Hunter Meyer takes third. We're missing one driver. Oh, let me guess. It's Pumpkin. Oh, there's Pumpkin over on turn three. How cute. 
You know, Pumpkin is just not an aggressive driver name. You really can't say it without smiling and going, aww. If it was Pumpkin, Pumpkins can be a little creepy, but when you switch the M for the N and make it Pumpkin... It makes it cute, and that's just not really good for King of the Mountain Racing. Well, I'm not really sure how important the name selection is as far as the racing. Believe me, it's very important. Okay, well, here we go with race three. This time we have Pumpkin, aw, out in the front right. Look at that, Pumpkin. And Hunter Meyer on the front left. Right now, Pumpkin only has one point. Aw, Pumpkin's, Pumpkin's first point. point. Aw, it's so cute. Look at that, Derek Wooden helping Pumpkin down the track. Let's see if Pumpkin can hold on to the lead. Derek Wooden blocking traffic for Pumpkin. I think we're about to see Pumpkin's first win. Aw, go Pumpkin, go. But here comes Derek Wooden Aww. to steal it at the last second. Oh, that was so savage. He took candy from a baby and then just ate it right in front of the baby. <laughs> oh, man. You know, you may be right about that name selection thing. Trust me, it's a real thing. We gotta see that again. Here comes Pumpkin all alone on the track. But then here comes big bad Derek Wooden on the outside lane. I think Hunter Meyer might have got the pass too. We're gonna have to look at the top down camera, but that is three wins in a row for Derek Wooden. Wow. Very impressive driving. Here they come and... It was close. We need to freeze that frame. And second place will go to Pumpkin, just barely. Yeah, that was super close. Well, three wins in a row, this race is mathematically over. Derek Wooden will be advancing on to King of the Mountain Tournament number four. But you know, we've had some exciting races on race four, so let's see what happens. Hunter Meyer and Jensen in the front row. Here they go, Jensen in the lead, followed by Derek Wooden. If Wooden can get around Jensen, we might have a clean sweep. Hunter Meyer, Jensen fighting for first. Some paint swapping around two, Hunter Meyer takes the lead. Jensen in second. Jensen looking to pass around turn three. Hunter Meyer gets a boost coming out of that corner. He takes the win on race four, but it's too little too late as Derek Wooden will be advancing on to the tournament. Total annihilation in the points by Derek Wooden, 17 points. Yeah, he did not take any chances in this qualifying race. He got a little hung up there in traffic on the last race, but I'm sure he had to be thinking in his mind about a clean sweep. I think we've only seen one or two clean sweeps in the King of the Mountain qualifying round so far. Well, not for this tournament. Yeah, I mean, overall, it's a rare occurrence. It's King of the Mountain tournament number four, qualifying race four. Up first, we have Marcel driving in Start Right. The Start Right is a Porsche 993 GT2 weighing 75.4 grams. Then we have Baby Girl driving in Frostbite. The Frostbite is a Porsche Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid Sport Turismo weighing 82.4 grams. That's a mouthful. Then we have Setter Polberg driving in Quicksand. The Quicksand is a 2017 Audi RS6 Avant weighing 99.4 grams. Is it just me or are those wheels really big? Uh, yeah, they look a little big. And last up is Levi Cool driving in the Grey Ghost. The Grey Ghost is another Porsche Panamera Turbo. Well, you get the point. It's the same car as the other one. Come on, we need the whole name. E-Hybrid Sport, yada yada. It's 65.1 grams. Don't get lazy on me with the commentary. I already read the name. It's long. We, we're done. You should always go the extra and mile. And here we go with race one. Marcel on your front right, baby girl on the front left. Here they come down the first straight. It's a close race between Marcel and Baby Girl. Baby Girl pulling ahead. Levi Cool pulls into second. Marcel falling back to third. Baby Girl way down the track. Now she's all by herself. And this one is not even a race. Baby Girl takes it easily. Like taking candy? Is it really that easy to take candy? I guess it depends. Setter Polberg, not happy about coming in last place, gives a shove to Levi Cool's car. Boo, nobody likes a sore loser. So far, it is looking good for the Porsche Panamera on this track. This was the championship model from the Porsche tournament we did back in 2019. Doesn't matter if it's stock or modified, it seems to be a quality car. Baby girl already with a big lead here. I'm wondering if we're gonna see a race or not today. Oh, uh -oh. Well, we're gonna see a wreck. Setter Polberg is down and out. Here comes baby girl to pick up win number two with a track time of 17.280 seconds. Levi Cool takes second. So far, the Porsche Panameras have been taking the top two spots. Baby girl now has 10 points. Levi Cool has six. Setter Polberg won. I think he got too cocky with that name choice. Look right here, Marcel with a knockout blow on turn two. Flip Setter Polberg off the track. You know, I wonder if there's a Porsche thing going on here. Setter Polberg is the only one with an Audi. 
Everyone else has a Porsche. Well, I guess he didn't get the memo. Here we go with race three. Levi Cool on the front right, Setter Polberg on the left. Levi Cool followed closely behind by Baby Girl. Marcel having some trouble on the turn. He spins around. Once again, it's the two Porsche Panameras out in front. Baby Girl getting aggressive on two. Levi Cool with a solid lead going through the final turn. And Levi Cool will pick up his first win, followed by Baby Girl. Again, the Porsche Panameras. Ooh. Whoa. Marcel. That's why you shouldn't be racing backwards. But look at the scoreboard. Baby Girl has 13. Levi Cool has 11. Only two points separate the two Porsche Panameras. Look at the top of your screen. Marcel got spun around on that first turn. I'm surprised he made it to the bottom. Yeah, I thought he might have came off the track. Let's see from this camera angle right here. There he is way back there. Well, hey, it's better to finish last than not finish at all. Well, either way, he's going to lose. Well, that is true. After all, if you ain't first. Oh, this again. You're last. Thank you for your words of wisdom. Shake and bake. Okay, we got one race left here. Baby Girl in the lead in points with 13. Levi Cole has 11. Marcel and Cedar Polberg are in the front, but they have no chance of advancing on. So the real race here is between the two cars in the rear. Two points separate Baby Girl in the white car and Levi Cole in the gray car. We got some contact. A lot of banging around turn two. Cedar Polberg and Marcel break away. I think we lost the two Panameras. Marcel in the lead here. Cedar Polberg going in reverse. Marcel will take the win on race four, but the winner of the night is going to be Baby Girl. Well, that was pretty anticlimactic. I was hoping to see Baby Girl and Levi Cool battle it all the way down to the finish line. Instead, they both decide to pull over and take a break. Well, it all started right here with Marcel getting into the back end of Stetter Polberg's car. Spins him around. That slows everybody down. If it's worth anything, Baby Girl was in front of Levi Cool. Yeah, that's not really worth anything at all to me. Well, that's just how racing goes sometimes. It's King of the Mountain Tournament number four, qualifying race five. Up first, we have Kelly Calkins driving in Valentine. The Valentine is a classic nomad weighing 86 grams. Then we have Carly Kay driving in the Insurrection. The Insurrection is a turbo Mustang weighing 112.4 grams. Next up is another Mustang. It's Michael D driving in the American Stallion. The American Stallion is a Ford Mustang, like you said. It weighs 68.4 grams. And last up, we have Big Tex driving in Gangrene. I hope that doesn't spread. The Gangrene is a 1969 Chevelle weighing 104.1 grams. The drivers will compete in four races. The driver with the most points at the end will qualify for King of the Mountain Tournament number four. Here we go, we have Kelly Calkins starting off on the front right and Carly Kay on the front left. Carly Kay leading them down the first straight. Kelly Calkins in second. It's a classic battle between Ford and Chevy. Carly Kay looking strong out there. Big Tex goes off the road, comes to a stop. Here comes Carly Kay. Carly Kay will take the win on race one, followed by Kelly Calkins. And who's that in the distance? Here comes Michael D. Slow and steady does not win these races. Michael D pulls it in backwards. Carly Kay gets a track time of 17.416 seconds. A rough start for Big Tex. No one even hit him. He just had trouble making that turn. Carly Kay off to a good start here. So far, this looks like it's gonna be a race between Carly Kay and Kelly Calkins. And here we go at the start of race two. Carly Kay starting off in the pole position, followed by Kelly Calkins. Big Tex back there in third, falling behind even more now. Carly Kay looking fast, going into two. Kelly Calkins hanging in there. Whoa, Carly spins around. Whoa. Oh, and the Nomad flips. There goes Kelly Calkins. What happened? Carly Kay speeding to the finish line, going reverse. It does not matter. She is fast. Is anyone else going to join her? I'm not seeing anybody. Up oh, there's Kelly Calkins upside down on her roof. Michael D stuck on turn three. And Big Tex. Where is he at? Oh, he's stuck also on turn three. This race is looking a little one-sided here, and that one side is called Carly K. That was a pretty sweet spin she did right there. She kind of reminds me of Crazy Jimmy. Oh yeah, that was totally a Crazy Jimmy move. The only difference is, Jimmy likes to let you know that you're number one while he's doing it. I don't think that's what that hand gesture means. Of course it does. I use it all the time. Okay, we're gonna have to have a talk after the show. See, look, you're number one, 3D. Okay, I think you know what that means. And here we go with race three. We have the two slowest cars in the front row. Big Tex on the front right and Michael D on the front left. 
Big Tex has yet to cross the finish line. Well, this right here is probably going to be his best shot. He's in the front row with Carly K right behind him. Looks like Big Tex is getting a push. Well, he certainly needs it. Let's see if Carly K tries pushing him out of the way. Carly K going for the pass on the inside. Oh, that was mean. But look at Big Tex. He's taking in there. Carly going for the pass again. Carly overtakes oh. Big Tex. He spun out. Oh. Well, we get smacked there. Oh, 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 wow. The Demolition Derby has come to King of the Mountain. Hey, Carly K could definitely be a member of the Crazy Bros Wrecking Crew. That was a wild series of events at the finish line. And look at Kelly Calkins, another DNF. What a shame. Kelly Calkins was definitely one of the faster drivers tonight. Look at this right here. Carly K and Big Tex side by side. Big Tex thought he was actually racing there for a moment. Door to door all the way to the last turn. And right here is where that turbo kicks in for Carly K. That's three wins in a row. The question is, will we see our first clean sweep of King of the Mountain Tournament number four. Well, that's really the only question with this last race because Carly K has 15 points. The second place driver has four, so she is guaranteed to move on to the tournament. The only question is, can she embarrass these drivers even more by getting a clean sweep? Carly K will be following Kelly Calkins down the track. Kelly Calkins in the lead. Carly K giving her a nudge. Come on, Carly, you can do it. This section of track is where things should get interesting. Kelly Calkins holding on to that lead. Here they go through McClyde straight. I think Kelly's got this one. Whoa! Oh, I spoke too soon. Kelly Calkins is over. Oh, Carly man. K does it. Wow. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a clean sweep perfect. by Carly K. <laughs> a perfect 20 points. And look at that time, 16. Oh, yeah. 976. That's a fast time. Carly K was in beast mode on that last race. Look at this right here. This is natural selection. You have the predator and the prey. Carly K is the predator, Kelly Calkins the prey. And right here is where nature chooses a faster car to win the race. You know, sometimes you almost sound like you know what you're talking about. I guess that's a compliment. This isn't one of those times. Wow, uh, rude. And I watch Animal Planet, so I know a little bit of something about what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, a little bit of something is a very good way to put it. Wow, I am not respected around here at all. It's King of the Mountain Tournament number four, qualifying race six. First up, we have Dan O'Caster driving in the Knight Rider. The Knight Rider is a Pontiac Firebird weighing 74.2 grams. Does that say Corgi? Yeah, we certainly haven't seen too many of those. And then we have Pauly driving in the Italian Eagle. The Italian Eagle is not a Trans Am. It is a Ferrari F40 weighing 106.9 grams. Wow, what a disrespect to the Trans Am brand. Says the guy who put a Ferrari logo on a Fiero. Then we have Slash Goodyear driving in Blue Bayou. The Blue Bayou is a Camaro Z28 weighing 85.6 grams. If anyone's tires get slashed, that guy is the number one suspect. Yep, I've got my eye on him. And finally, we have Joey Clemens driving in Firehawk 5.0. The Firehawk 5.0 is a 92 Ford Mustang weighing 110.8 grams. So we have three GM cars and one Ford. Uh, no, one of those is a Ferrari disguised as a Trans Am. Oh, uh, that's right. Here we go at the start of race one. Polly out in front in the Italian Eagle. Keyword Italian, it's not a Trans Am. So far, this is exactly what I would expect from a race with a Ferrari on a track. Well, we have seen a Pontiac beat a bunch of Ferraris before. Yeah, but that was a Fiero. And here comes Polly to easily take race one with a track time of 17.648 seconds. Joey Clemens and Slash get tangled up together. That's gonna be a double DNF. Look at this from the moment Polly leaves turn one. This race was over and done. Yes, this hardly seems like a fair matchup, especially without the presence of a Fiero. Here we go with race two. Polly starting off on the front right this time. Joey Clemens on the front left. Let's see if that Mustang has anything for that Ferrari. Here they go. They are off. Polly once again leading him down the first straight. Oh, this race is already over too. Polly has an even bigger lead this time. He's all by himself through turn two. Whoa! Whoa, he hits the guardrail. Polly manages to recover. Good thing we installed those guardrails. And even with all that bumping into the guardrail, Polly takes another massive win here. That is two in a row. I'm not even sure if we need to run any more races. Hey, maybe we'll see another clean sweep. It appears there's a dispute as to who came in third place on that race. We're gonna have to go to the replay. Really? They're disputing who came in third place? Yeah, all the positions are important. So we're trying to see who's the bigger loser here. Well, that's one way to put it, but you could also just say we're trying to figure out who came in third. And third place will go to Dano Caster. Congratulations, Dano. Hey, make fun of him if you want. Those two points are important. Dano has five. He's only five behind Polly. 
One DNF for Polly, and Dano's back in this thing. I guess we'll have to wait and see. This time, Joey Clemens is on the front right in the orange Mustang, slash Goodyear in the blue Camaro. Joey Clemens in the lead. Looks like he's getting some assistance from Polly. Polly right on his tail. Look at that, some great defensive driving by Joey Clemens. He shuts down Polly's attempt to pass. He's through the final turn. And race number three will go to Joey Clemens, followed by Polly. Slash Goodyear and oh, 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 oh. Dano Castle. He got pounded there at the finish line. Wow, he got hit by all three drivers. I don't think he knows what's going on right now. That win is going to put Joey Clemens in second place now with eight points. He is five points behind the leader, Pauly. So there technically is a way for him to tie uh, the score. I'm sorry, 3D. I know you're talking about the score, but can we just appreciate this action on the track? Uh, sure. This is my favorite part. You've got to love that late hit from Slash Goodyear. We can watch it again if you want. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Here comes Dano. Hits the back end of that Mustang. Slides into the Ferrari, and then here comes Slash Goodyear for the finishing move. Okay, are you done now? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Okay, where was I? If Joey Clemens comes in first place and Pauly gets a DNF, we would have a tie score. Let's see, Joey Clemens is starting in the back row, so that's not looking good for him. And Pauly just doesn't seem like the type of driver that's going to get a DNF. Well, we'll find out right now. Dano Caster is out in the lead. It's a close group here. Pauly is right on his tail. Joey Clemens all the way back in fourth place. The Italian Eagle is closing in. Here comes Pauly. He gets the overtake on Dano Caster. Oh, what oh, spin! Oh, that was awesome. Pauly crosses the finish line going backwards, so he will be the winner of the night. But it almost all fell apart for him right there. It fell apart? What are you talking about? He did a 540 spin and cross the finish line backwards. Well, I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. Oh, he totally did that on purpose. Here's another look at that pass. Beautiful overtake on the inside lane over Dano Caster. Look at the spin right here. Look how controlled it is. He may have been trying to do a 360 and then just overturned at the end. Look at Joey Clemens on the left lane there. If the finish line was just a little further out, he might have caught up to him. Here's the finishing order for that last race. And there's the final score. Pauly wins three out of four races with a score of 18 points. A great job by Pauly in the Italian Eagle. It's King of the Mountain Tournament number four, qualifying race seven. First up, we have Sadie driving in the White Owl. The White Owl is a 2019 Mercedes-Benz AMG GT 63S weighing 75.9 grams. Then we have Pablo driving in the Queen. The Queen is an Aston Martin DBS weighing 70.4 grams. Then it's Frank Martin driving in the Transporter. The Transporter is a Mercedes-Benz 190E weighing 82.7 grams. And last up, we have Tornado Joe driving in the Telstar. The Telstar is a 92 Ford Thunderbird weighing 99.8 grams. Is it just me or one of these things is not like the others? Yeah, Tornado Joe seems a little out of place in this race, but hey, who knows? The drivers will compete in four races. The top driver in points will advance on to King of the Mountain Tournament number four. Here we go at the start of the first race. We have Sadie on the front right in the white Mercedes, Pablo in the red Aston Martin. So that's two Mercedes, an Aston Martin, and a Thunderbird. Yeah, the first three makes sense. I'm just not sure how the Thunderbird fits in with these cars. Needless to say, Tornado Joe is all the way in the back. Here comes Sadie rounding the final turn, and race one will go to Sadie, followed by Frank Martin, Pablo, and here comes Tornado Joe. More like Tornado Slow. Sadie gets a track time of 18.152 seconds. Let's look at the replay right here. Frank Martin was trying to get the pass on the inside, but right there, Sadie shuts the door on him and secures the win. Here we go with race two. Pablo starting off on the front right and Tornado Joe on the front left. With a name like Tornado, you think he would be fast. Well, maybe they're trying to be ironic. That would mean that they knew they were slow. Well, it may be unintentional, but it's not looking good for Joe right now. Pablo out in the front this time in the Aston Martin. He's followed closely behind by Sadie. A tap there from behind by Sadie. She's trying to get past him. Keep on pushing. Pablo just not letting go of the lead. There goes Sadie. She gets pushed ahead now. Tornado Joe with the assist. Pablo crashes into the tires. Everyone comes to a stop. And this race is over. We're going to have to restart. What a shame. Tornado Joe was actually in second place. Let's see what happened again. It looked like Sadie may have hit the back end of Pablo's car. That sends him sideways. He was not going to let Sadie get through. But here comes Tornado Joe with the push. I thought that might send Sadie past the finish line, but unfortunately for her, she gets stuck right here. Here we go with the restart of race two, Pablo and Tornado Joe in the front row. Let's see if they can finish this time. 
Pablo out in front. This time it's a closer race going around that first turn. Look at Tornado Joe. He's actually challenging for second. And Tornado Joe does move into second. Here comes Frank Martin. He goes off the road. That stops Sadie. Look at Joe. He's going for the pass. What is going on here? Tornado Joe takes over. I can't believe it. And I did not expect to say this, but Tornado Joe wins race two. What? Wow. I, I don't know what to say. I certainly did not have that in my predictions that Tornado Joe would actually pass anybody. In this case, he actually went from being in third place to first place. I don't get it. Right here, Pablo, once again, having trouble coming out of that turn. That slows him down. He then makes the mistake of pulling to the outside left, and that just opens the door wide for Tornado Joe to pull on through. So Tornado Joe is now first place in points. Yes, he is in lead by one point. Tornado Joe now has six points. Sadie has five. Pablo also has five, and Frank Martin is on the bottom with three. We have Tornado Joe here in the front right. Frank Martin is in the black Mercedes. He's in the lead. Tornado Joe in second place. Here they come to the open track. Frank Martin looking good. Can he keep that lead? It's a tight race back there for second and third. Frank Martin is all alone going around the final turn. It's a battle for second and third. Tornado Joe gets sideways. Frank Martin will take the win. And the other three drivers come to a stop because of Tornado Joe. Oh, wow. A triple DNF. That was not Tornado Joe's fault, though. Look at the replay right here. He's doing fine, gets hit from the back by Sadie. That is the second time she's hit someone, causing them to DNF. Well, that is gonna hurt all three of them in points. Frank Martin goes to the top, he has eight points now. Tornado Joe in second with six, Sadie and Pablo with five. This right here is the final race. We have Frank Martin on the front right and Sadie on the front left. Frank Martin only up by two over Tornado Joe. This time it's a close one down the first straight. Frank Martin and Sadie side by side. Frank Martin pulling ahead now. If Frank wins this one, he's got it. Sadie in hot pursuit in second place, followed by Pablo. Sadie does it again. Frank Martin gets sideways now. Sadie pulling ahead. She passes him. Oh! oh. And they all come to a big pileup. Oh, man, that was tough. Sadie is upside down. The Aston Martin flipped over. And once again, we're going to have to restart this race. There goes Sadie once again doing that pit maneuver. It has not been a winning strategy for her, but maybe that's not her goal. Maybe her goal is to sabotage. So you're saying that she entered the competition just to mess with the other drivers? Maybe she works for a competitor channel and she was hired to come mess up King of the Mountain. You know, I'm concerned about you. What, man? You gotta open your mind. Here we go with the restart of race four. Frank Martin and Sadie in the front row. Once again, Frank Martin and Sadie side by side coming down the first straight. It's a close one around the corner. Sadie pulling ahead this time. Sadie in the lead. Frank Martin now in second, Pablo in third. Tornado Joe all the way in the back. Sadie leaving Frank Martin way behind. And the final race will go to... Whoa! Oh, 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 she's off the track. And there goes Frank Martin to take the win. And he will be advancing on to King of the Mountain Tournament number four. Wow, what a turn of events at the end there. Well, that right there is what Sadie the Saboteur gets. A taste of her own medicine. And there's Tornado Joe upside down as well. You know, he surprised us all with that second race, but he just could not capture that thunder in a bobble again. We have to see that last race again. Here comes Sadie around the final turn with a smug look on her face. You can see her face? I imagine she had a smug look. And then just boom, self-sabotage. Here it is from another angle. What a way to go out. King of the Mountain Tournament number four, qualifying race eight. First up, we have Paul Ross driving in, Rig Wrecker Racing. Rig Wrecker Racing is a Ford Escort Rally weighing 75.5 grams. Then we have Lady of Speed driving in, Lady's Choice. The Lady's Choice is an Aston Martin 177 weighing 73.8 grams. Ace Malone is driving in the Road Tripper. The Road Tripper is a Chevy Impala weighing 86.5 grams. And last up, we have TL Senior driving in Pony Express. The Pony Express is a 67 Shelby GT500 weighing 89.4 grams. The drivers will compete in four races. 
Whoever has the highest score will advance on to King of the Mountain Tournament number four. We've got Paul Ross in the black Ford Escort and Lady of Speed in the red Aston Martin leading us down in the first race. We've seen two of those Ford Escort rallies do good in the DRC. The question is, how will that car handle Race Mountain? Well, right now, Lady of Speed is out in the lead in that red Aston Martin. She's got quite a lead there. TL Senior moves up to second place, overtaking Paul Ross. Lady of Speed going around the final corner, and race one will be an easy win for Lady of Speed. Look at that time. We've got a new record for the tournament, 16.120 seconds. That is a fast time. TL Senior comes in second place, Paul Ross in third, and Ace Malone comes in fourth. Let's take another look at how well Lady of Speed handles these corners. A good clean exit from the corner is key to giving a fast time, and look at that. Yeah, straight on the track, no bouncing around, no swerving and sliding on the corners. Those are the key ingredients to setting a new track record. That's got me thinking now, we should commentate an entire race using interpretive dance. Yeah, that does not sound like a good idea at all. You need to expand your horizons, man. Interpretive dance is the future. Yeah, but how people look at the race and then look at the dancer? Simple. Dolby Vision. Yeah, that's not what Dolby Vision is or how it works. It's worth a try. It's not. Lady of Speed out in the lead again. She is in a league of her own out there. This is not even a race. Well, I guess it's a race for second place. Wait, look at that time. Whoa, Lady of Speed sets another record for the tournament. 15.962 seconds. Wow, back-to-back -back records for the tournament. Lady of Speed is on fire. A very impressive run, two wins in a row. We're gonna have to go to the replay to see who came in second and third. Ah, who cares? They don't stand a chance to win. Well, we still have to see. Here it is. Oh, that's a really close one. Wow, neck and neck. We're gonna have to go to the overhead camera. And here they are. And it's gonna go to Paul Ross. Wow, just barely. Yeah, that was a close one. It will probably be insignificant depending on how Lady of Speed does in these next two races. She'll be starting in the back row for race three and four. In the front row, we have TL Senior in the blue car and Ace Malone in the black and orange. TL Senior in the lead, getting some pushes by the Lady of Speed. I can hear her saying, move, get out the way. Here they are in the open section, Lady of Speed trying to pass. She gets shut down. That causes her to slide sideways. TL Senior with a solid lead here. And race three will go to TL Senior, followed by Lady of Speed, Ace Malone, and Paul Ross. That's a big win for TL Senior. He's now up to 10 points, only three behind Lady of Speed. Yeah, he's got a chance. Paul Ross and Ace Malone are just way too behind in points. The real race now is between Lady of Speed in the red Aston Martin and TL Senior in the blue Shelby. Both of them are starting in the back row on the final race. I'd say TL Senior's chances of winning are slim. Well, there's two scenarios. He could win, and Lady of Speed comes in third. That would tie the score. Or he could come in second place, and Lady of Speed DNFs. Like I said, his chances are very slim. Here we go at the final race. Ace Malone on the front right, and Paul Ross on the front left. Paul Ross taking the lead down the first straight, followed by Lady of Speed. He's getting a boost from that Aston Martin. TL Senior trailing way back there in fourth. Here comes the speed. Lady of Speed pulls up on Paul Ross. Ross holding onto the lead. She almost got him. Here they come down the final straight. Lady of Speed closing in. Paul Ross will take that one on the last race. But the winner of the night is Lady of Speed. She did an amazing job out there, setting two track records in a row. She also won two races and came in second place twice. She is going to be a threat in the tournament for sure. That is one fast car with a driver who knows how to handle that speed. Hey, that's why they call her Lady of Speed. It's King of the Mountain Tournament number four, qualifying race nine. First up, we have Dos Bros Racing driving in Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. Seriously? Don't look at me. I don't pick the names. Okay, well, Baby Yoda, it's ridiculous to call it Baby Just Yoda. Just say the car model. It's a Nissan Skyline HT 2000 GTX weighing 66.7 grams. Then we have Ryder Miller driving in the Bloody Dinosaur. Seriously, what is up with these names? The builders of the cars pick the names, so that's what you get sometimes. Well, at least the color of the car is red. The Bloody Dinosaur is a Nissan Skyline weighing 87.4 grams. Then we have Rob Locke driving in Westfield. Well, I guess that name's a little better. Westfield is a Nissan Skyline. HT 2000 GTX weighing 94.6 grams. You're so critical today about the names. Well, it just started with the Baby Yoda. The car was in green. There was no tie into the Mandalorian. Well, last up, we have Little Twitchy driving in a Liminati. Wow, Little Twitchy. Come on, man. Just let them know the model name of the car. Is that a rap name or a medical condition? <laughs> Both. Just tell us the model name. Well, the Eliminati is a Nissan Skyline GTR R32 weighing 93.8 grams. My prediction for this race is that the Nissan will win. Ah, yes. Very clever. We have four Nissans on the track, four races. The top driver will advance on to King of the Mountain Tournament number four. 
Dos Bros Racing leading us down the first straight. They're followed closely behind by Rob Locke in the black car. Here they go through turn two. Dos Bros gets sideways. Ryder Miller trying to push his way through. Dos Bros managed to hold on to the lead as a close group comes to the finish line. Look at that. Dos Bros slides sideways past the finish line. He was being pushed by Ryder Miller and Rob Locke. Ryder Miller just slightly ahead of Rob Locke on that finish. Here's the replay. Dos Bros and Rob Locke trying to drift there. That is not the best place to try to pull that maneuver off. It looked like right here, Ryder Miller in the red car was going to try to pass. A great job, though, by Dos Bros Racing to hold on to that lead. Yeah, they even blocked their way past the finish line. That was a close race for second and third. Ryder Miller just edging out that second place spot over Rob Locke. Let's see that again from the Skycam. A great move there by Dos Bros Racing. Here we go with race two. We have Little Twitchy in the lead, followed by Rob Locke. Let's see if Little Twitchy can control that car. Watch him just sporadically start swerving all around. Oh, there he goes. He was a little twitchy on McLeod Street. A close race through the final corner. Little Twitchy holding on to that lead, and he will take the win on race two. Followed by Rob Locke in second, Ryder Miller in third, and Dos Bros Racing takes fourth place. So far, this is a very competitive race. Look at that scoreboard. Yeah, we have Little Twitchy and Dos Bros Racing tied with six. Ryder Miller and Rob Locke tie with five. There's two races to go, so this is still anybody's race. This time we have Little Twitchy on the front right and Rob Locke on the front left. Little Twitchy one point ahead of Rob Locke. And here we go at the start of race three. Rob Locke pulling ahead coming down the first straight as they go into turn one. He maintains that lead going into the open track. Little Twitchy in second place. Rob Locke bouncing off the side. Oh, now. He's now going in reverse. Can he make it to the finish line? Yes, he can. It's going to be Rob Locke, Little Twitchy, Ryder Miller, and Dos Bros Racing finishing in that order. That win will move Rob Locke into first place. He now has 10. Little Twitchy right underneath him with 9. Ryder Miller and Dos Bros tied with 7. Rob Locke almost lost it on that race. He came out of 2. Bounces off one side, hits the other, almost goes sideways again, but that tap from Little Twitchy seemed to straighten him out. Rob Locke once again demonstrating the importance of knowing how to drive backwards on Race Mountain. Look at that block by Little Twitchy over Ryder Miller. Here we go at the final race, Rob Locke and Little Twitchy, only one point separates them on the scoreboard. Rob Locke starting off on the front right, Little Twitchy right behind him. Which Nissan will advance on to King of the Mountain Tournament number four? Rob Locke once again back out in the lead. He's followed by Little Twitchy. His lead is getting really big, really fast. Rob Locke leaving the competition in his dust. He is a man on a mission, and that mission is to advance on to King of the Mountain, tournament number four. Mission accomplished for Rob Locke. Rob Locke finishes with a score of 15. He won two out of the four races. That's three points over Little Twitchy. Rob Locke was not leaving anything up to chance on that last race. He went flying down that track like a bat out of hell. He had a fast time too, 16.474 seconds. Wow, that's a good time. And what's even better is this car has a decent name. Are you still on that? Nobody wants a car named Baby Yoda or the Bloody Dinosaur winning King of the Mountain. Well, someone out there did. It's King of the Mountain tournament number four, qualifying race 10. Up first we have Farrell Patrick driving in. Little Audrey 2.0. Little Audrey 2.0 is a 1969 Mustang weighing 67 grams. I wonder what the 1.0 version was like. I don't know, but I'm glad we got the new one. Then we have Maeve Crooksy driving in Bane. Bane is a 1968 Cougar weighing 79.3 grams. I believe the door says, I never die. Try telling that to McClyde's family. Race, Race in, in peace, peace McClyde. Then we have Wakala Wally driving in OG Two-Tone. The OG Two-Tone is a 67 Shelby GT500 weighing 90.8 grams. That is a sweet custom paint job. Yeah, you gotta love that OG Two-Tone paint. And last up we have Beetle Mike driving in Eleanor Rigby's El Camino. Eleanor Rigby's El Camino is an El Camino. It would be strange if it wasn't an El Camino. And it weighs 65.1 grams. The drivers will be competing in four races. The top driver in points will advance on to King of the Mountain tournament number four. This is qualifying race 10. There are a total of 16 spots in the tournament. We've got Farrell Patrick and Maeve Crooksy in the front row. Beetle Mike in the red El Camino comes off the track back there. Maeve Crooksy pulls into the lead. Farrell Patrick in second place, he spins out. He's going backwards. Maeve with a big lead now through the final turn. 
and race one will go to Maeve Kruksey. That was an easy win there for Maeve. Wakala Wally will take second place. I do not see Feral Patrick or Beetle Mike. Oh, they're giving them a DNF on the scoreboard. And there's Feral Patrick on his roof over on turn three. And Beetle Mike stuck way up there after turn one. He tried jumping lanes and got stuck on the divider. Here's the replay. Keep your eye on the red El Camino. Right there, he hit the back end of Maeve's car, and then he got hung up on the lane divider. Well, it's probably not a good idea to be pushing and shoving around that corner. Here's what happened to Feral Patrick. He just did not have enough speed to go around that high banky turn. I'm feeling hungry. Yeah, me too. Okay, who are you talking to? That voice that, you know, you didn't hear that whispering voice? Uh, no, I didn't hear anything but you talking to yourself. No, there was someone on the mic. Um, I'm only seeing one person on the mic. Maybe it was some kind of interference? Perhaps it was your, you know, internal voice? Oh! Crutchy's oh, no. out of the race. That's three cars down. That leaves Beetle Mike all alone on the track, and he will take an easy win on race two. Wow, what happened back there? We are going to have to see the replay. Maeve Cruxy just flipped over and took everybody else out with her. Beetle Mike was out front, so he didn't get tangled up in that mess. Here's the replay. Maeve just swerves over to the wall. Wow, that car does not seem to be very well balanced at all. Maeve Cruxy was upside down, then she gets hit by the other cars. They end up flipping, and she ends up right side up. Does Cruxy mean crazy in English? Because that was crazy. Um, let's see, I guess it's of Polish origin, meaning of pertaining to or characteristic of ravens. Okay, well let's just pretend it means crazy. That's not really how words work. No one would know. Here we go with race three. Beetle Mike back out in the lead. Maeve Cruxy in second place. Here comes Wakala Wally to overtake Maeve. Beetle Mike still out in front. Wakala Wally trying to close in on him. He's right on his bumper now. We got a race here. A light tap around the final turn. And Beetle Mike will hold off Wakala Wally for the win. A very close race here. Ooh. Beetle Mike runs into Feral Patrick at the intersection. That win will give Beetle Mike 10 points. Maeve Kruksy has seven. Wakala Wally six. And Feral Patrick one point so far. Why wow. is Feral Patrick even here? He might just be having an off night. Or maybe his car just sucks. Well, keep in mind race two, there was that, uh, yeah, you're probably you right. You know it's true. We've got one race left. Beetle Mike has a three-point lead. He is starting from the back row. Let's see what happens on this final race. Wakala Wally and your car's too slow, Feral Patrick, are in the front row. And they're off. The slowest cars in the front row. Wakala Wally has the lead going through turn one. Beetle Mike and Feral Patrick side by side. Beetle Mike now in second place. Some paint swapping around turn two. Feral Patrick just loses it back there. That's no surprise. Wakala Wally makes it around the final turn and will take the win on the last race, followed by Beetle Mike. But I believe Beetle Mike, well, he we crashed in the tunnel. Yes, Beetle Mike will be the one advancing on to King of the Mountain Tournament number four. Beetle Mike beats out Wakala Wally by two points. And Feral Patrick will end this qualifying race with one point. How sad is that? It was a pretty sad performance. It's King of the Mountain Tournament number four, qualifying race 11. First up, we have B. Cavello driving in the Hive. The Hive is a Fiat 500 weighing 76.1 grams. Let's see if that little B has some speed. It certainly has a very cool custom paint job. Next, we have 603 Motorsports driving in Buggin' Beetle. The Buggin' Beetle is a Volkswagen Concept 1 weighing 68.8 grams. I'm starting to see a theme here with the small cars and insects. Small cars, yes. Insects, no. Then we have Shenanigan O'Flanagan driving in Juliet. Juliet is an Alfa Romeo Julia weighing 66.4 grams. I'm keeping a close eye on him. I don't want to see any shenanigans on the track. Well, there's going to be one shenanigan on the track. And last up, we have Speed Force driving in Soylent Green. Soylent Green is also an Alfa Romeo Giulia. This one weighs 97.7 grams. Have you ever tried Soylent Green? It's delicious. Tastes just like chicken. Dude, Soylent Green is people. What? Well, it's fictional, so I don't think you've ever actually eaten it. Have you? I had some Chipotle. Oh, well, maybe you have had it. 3D. I'm just messing with you. Chipotle is a fine dining establishment. Why are you giving me that look? What? I know that look. Hey, look, there's a race. We've got B. Cavello out in front. Shenanigan O'Flanagan in second place. Watch that car. Don't let him get away with anything. Shenanigan gets loose. He's going sideways. See that he is up to something. B. Cavello, the only driver we see on the track, passes the finish line to take the first win. Look at that. We're only one race in and Shenanigan O'Flanagan is already up to his shenanigans. Wow, that's a tongue twister. A triple DNF to start things off. That will give B. Cavello a five-point lead. A great way to start things off. Keep your eye on that silver car right there. He gets sideways. 
and they just blocked everybody else. Well, it did look like 603 Motorsports and the Black Beetle hit him from the rear and that's what caused him to spin around. I don't know. We've got Speed Force in the green car out in the lead. And there goes Shenanigan O'Flanagan again, Whoa. two times in a row. Speed Force loses control, he stalled out. There's a jump start from 603. 603 Motorsports going backwards, runs into Speed Force, and they will both pass the finish line. Not a fast time, but a win is a win, and this was almost not a win at all. Shenanigan O'Flanagan upside down, getting what he deserves. B. Cavello stuck over on the entrance of turn three. Let's try to make sense of what happened here. It's simple. O'Flanagan was back up to his shenanigans once again. This time he spun out, went backwards all by himself. B. Cavello also having trouble there, bouncing back and forth. And here comes O'Flanagan. Boom. A lot of DNF so far in this race. Well, there's a lot of shenanigans out there on the track. It could be that, or it could just be that these are short wheelbase cars, and they don't handle race mountain as well as long wheelbase cars. Why are you making excuses for O'Flanagan? I'm not making excuses. Shenanigans is right in his name. He didn't even hit anyone in the last round. I feel like there's something going on here with you and O'Flanagan. I don't even know the guy. I'm keeping an eye on you now, 3D. Go ahead, I'm right here. Here we go with race three. We've got Speed Force and O'Flanagan in the front row. Speed Force in the lead, O'Flanagan in second place. Hopefully we can have a clean race this time. They're sliding around turn two. Whoa! This time it's Speed Force to spin around. O'Flanagan makes contact. Here comes the B. She's attacking. Speed Force on the rail. And B. Cavello. Now that was awesome. She went from third place to first place to steal the win from Speed Force. I'm going to call her Killer B after that race. That was a great race. It goes to show you the advantage a little car can have on the track. These Alfa Romeos really having a lot of trouble on turn two. Look at this right here. Here comes B. Cavello in the blue car. Right on the inside lane goes underneath O'Flanagan. It looks like she almost shoved Speed Force off the road. That's that Killer B instinct. And then takes the win like a boss. Very impressive, but now she takes the lead in points as well. B. Cavello with 10 points. Speed Force has eight, 603 Motorsports has four, and Shenanigan O'Flanagan has two. Serves him right. Here we go with the final race. Winner qualifies for King of the Mountain tournament number four. There's O'Flanagan slowing Speed Force down. B. Cavello back there in third. She currently has a two-point lead over Speed Force. Somebody get O'Flanagan out of the way. Speed Force trying to get around him. O'Flanagan blocks. Don't tell me he's going to win this one. Here he comes down the final stretch, and Shenanigan O'Flanagan actually takes a win. Speed Force comes in second. 603 Motorsports takes third. What happened to B. Cavello? Oh no, she wrecked on turn three. B. Cavello upside down on turn three and that's gonna cost her the race. Speed Force will be your winner of the night by one point. Wow, that's so close. If B. Cavello had just finished, even if she came in fourth place, we would have a tie in our hands, but that DNF is gonna punch the ticket for Speed Force to move on to King of the Mountain tournament number four. What a shame, I was liking that killer B. It's King of the Mountain Tournament number four, qualifying race 12. Up first, we have returning driver Tommy B driving in the T-Rex 3. The T-Rex 3 is a Subaru Impreza WRX weighing 115 grams. Tommy B has been racing here since the first King of the Mountain. Yes, he is a King of the Mountain veteran. Up next, we have Gulf Rainer driving in RX Heaven. The RX Heaven is a 95 Mazda RX-7. That rhymes, I like it. This Mazda weighs in at 85 grams. Let's see if that RX-7 can take him to RX Heaven. Then we have Pikov Andropov. Yeah, I don't know either. Driving in makersbox.us. Wait a minute, are they trying to plug a website with their car name? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you're not getting past old 2D with that one. It's another 95 Mazda RX-7 weighing 91.5 grams. And last up we have XDRK driving in White Comet. The White Comet is a Mazda RX-7 weighing 73.3 grams. So we have three Mazda RX-7s and one Subaru. Yes, the Subaru is outnumbered in this race. That may be true, but he has a much bigger engine. Look at that thing. Don't let him fool you, size does matter. You know, an engine that large sticking straight up out of the car Car, makes me wonder if he's overcompensating for It's something. a race 3D. Everyone knows you gotta go big, you gotta go hard. Here we go with the first race. Tommy B and Golf Raynard in the front row. Golf Raynard in the lead. XD Arcade in the white car in second place. He's having some steering issues. Tommy B in the Subaru back in third. Golf Raynard comes around the final corner. XD Arcade on his bumper literally as they pass the finish line. Golf Rainer takes the first win with a time of 18.362 seconds. Tommy B comes in third in the Subaru. I'm wondering if that engine might be a little too big. Okay, at first you said it can't be too big, now it is. Am I not allowed to change my opinion when the facts present themselves? Uh, yeah, that's a good point, actually. Thank you. Golf Rainer looking good so far in that green Mazda RX-7. What a great looking car that is. Yeah, I love the color and the paint job on that one. Bro, are you okay? Yeah, I just... 
I just need a moment. Are those tears? <clears throat> no, just allergies. It's okay to have feelings. <sighs> no, it's just, uh, you know, that ad just made me think about how life is passing me by. Well, life is about to pass XDRK by if he doesn't get that thing under control. Have you ever thought about the people? Uh, bro, we got a race going on right here. Those people that just, like, touch your life. XDRK is touching Wolverine right now. You just gotta be in the moment. Get your head in the game. We got King of the Mountain going on right here. Come on. What really is King of the Mountain? Ow, what was that for? There we go. Now you're back. That was totally unnecessary, dude. Ow. What is going on with Peekov? That's his second DNF in a row. He didn't even make it past turn one that time. And look at XD Arcade. Wow, we put guardrails there for a reason. Looks like XD was trying his best to recreate the McClyde incident. Race, Race to Peace, Peace McClyde. McClyde. That cost him a lead, and Golf Rainer took over. That is two wins in a row for Golf Rainer in the green Mazda RX-7. Also, I feel like I need to say this again. What a great looking Absolutely, car. Absolutely, it's beautiful. That's going to give Golf Rainer 10 points on the board. XD Arcade is in second with six points. Tommy B has four. And Picov in the orange Mazda has zero. XD Arcade and Picov starting off in the front row on race three. XD Arcade leading them down the first straight into the first corner. He's fast, he just needs to keep it under control. This doesn't even look like a race right now. XD Arcade all by himself on the track. Picov in distant second. XD's looking fast. He flies around that corner. And XD will take the win on race three. And look at that track time, 16.254 seconds. Wow, he flew down that track like a comet. That is a super fast time. It will not beat the track time record for this tournament, which is 15.962 but that is certainly one of the fastest times we've seen. Last time he had a lot of trouble on McClyde Strait. This time he got his act together, put together a great run with a fast time. That will tie XD Arcade with Golf Rainer. They both have 11 points, both of them starting in the back row on this final race. That's where the real race is at on this one. Keep your eye on the white and green Mazda. The two slowest drivers in the front row. I think Pikov has been the slowest. He's getting a bump this time by XD Arcade. If XD finishes in front of Golf Rainer, he's got this. Golf Rainer way back and forth. Here comes XD Arcade. He's closing in on the orange Mazda. I thought it was going to pass. They're on the final stretch. And XD Arcade will be the one to advance on to King of the Mountain Tournament number four. Golf Rainer had a great start in this race. He won the first two races, but completely fell apart in the second half. This is one of those rare moments where second place has more wins than first place. Well, like you always say, consistency is key. That is correct, and XD Arcade definitely had that consistency, winning one race and coming in second place on all three other races. He also had the fastest time. It's King of the Mountain Tournament number four. Qualifying race 13. Up first, we have Nazar Kaid driving in Sir Pounce. Sir Pounce is a Jaguar XESV Project 8 weighing 71.2 grams. Sir Pounce makes me think of a cartoon. I think it's from Game of Thrones, actually. Then we have Scorpio Love Smith driving in the Junkyard Lambo. This Junkyard Lambo is a Lamborghini Countach pace car and it weighs 98.5 grams. Glad he got that thing out of the junkyard. Yes, the Countach does not belong in the junkyard. Up next is Stella Beans driving in Licorice. The Licorice is a Ferrari 456 GT weighing 97.6 grams. I like red licorice. The red stuff's not really licorice. It says it on the package. Yeah, but there's no licorice root, so it's just a name. Then we have Super Chief driving in the Scream Machine. I scream, you scream, we all scream for a 2005 Corvette weighing 89.2 grams. Uh, I'm not screaming for the Corvette. Not a Corvette guy? A fiberglass body? No thanks. I think they're using some carbon fiber panels now as well. Look, I'm all for weight reduction. Are you? Yeah. Because just, you know, looking... Are you body shaming in 2021? No, I'm just looking at the vehicle that you drive. Oh, so you're vehicle shaming now. There's no shame. You drive around a big truck. You don't seem like a weight reduction vehicle kind of guy. Well, that just goes to show how much you don't know about me. Nazir Kaid out in front. Stella Beans right behind him. The Jaguar versus the Ferrari. Stella Beans making a break for it. And she oh, takes oh, the oh, win. Yeah. Right at the finish line. Go Stella Beans. Stella Beans starting us off with a 16.856 second time and an amazing pass to boot. Stella Beans came down that last straight like a shot of espresso. That Ferrari's got some power. Well, Stella Beans is driving for Red Pill Racing. Oh, Red Pill. Well, that explains things. They are known for their top tier cars. Here we go with race two. Scorpio Love Smith on the front right in the Junkyard Lambo and Super Chief on the front left in the Green Corvette. Super Chief in the lead. It's close coming out of turn one. Here they come to the open track. Stella Beans going on the inside. There's the overtake. She gets sideways. We got a four car pile up. Oh man, that was going to be a good one. And sadly for Stella Beans, that race comes to an end for everybody. Womp womp. That's got to be frustrating for Stella Beans. She got around Super Chief on turn two. All that work she put in right here, 
goes to waste, and we're going to have to restart that race. That was going to be her second overtake of the day. I really like her style. Here we go. The drivers are back in the same positions as we restart race two. Scorpio and Super Chief neck and neck going into turn one. Lambo versus Corvette. The Lambo slightly in the lead. Now Super Chief takes over. Still beats back at it again. This time everyone is pushing Super Chief down the track. He holds on to the lead. Here comes Stella. Stella with the outside overtake again. Oh, oh wow. Stella Beans does it again. Picking up her second win with a pass right at the finish line. That car is hotter than a cup of joe. Stella Beans is on it tonight every race. She has ended up in the front, even the one we had to restart. The next two races, she's starting in the front row. I think we may have a chance at seeing another clean sweep. Oh man, you remember when clean sweeps were unheard of? Well, we have some big names in diecast racing here in tournament number four, a king of the mountain. Let's go Stella Beans. Super Chief on the front right, Stella Beans on the front left. Beat that Corvette, Stella. Wow, we got a real Corvette hater over here. I'm not a hater, I just have an intense or passionate dislike for that car. That is literally the definition of hate. Oh, okay, well, I guess I am. Stella Beans is just tearing up this track. Look at that. Oh man. You could just feel that when that car flew by. Oh, a close call. Stella Beans with a track time of 16.242 seconds. That will put her way up on the list for qualifiers. And yes, she will be the one qualifying. She has an eight point lead with one race left. The only thing on the line in this last race is can Stella Beans pull off a clean sweep? Uh, I can answer that. Yes, she can. I gotta agree. I don't see any reason why not. She's starting off in the pole position on the last race. Her handling and control around these turns is just superb. Ooh, that was a close call. Look at that, she even timed her pass through the intersection correctly. Here we go, Stella Beans one race away from joining the Clean Sweep Club. That sounds like a club for housekeepers or janitors. Okay, the, the perfect score club. Yeah, that sounds like nerdy school kids. Okay, the king of the mountain elite. Oh, I like that one. Stella Beans once again, way out in front of everyone else. She taps the wall. Whoa! Don't blow it, Stella. A rocky pass through McClyde straight, but she recovers. Here she comes. And Stella Beans will be joining the king of the mountain, perfect. Elite, with a perfect score. Amazing job by Stella Beans. She is no doubt a challenger for the crown in King of the Mountain Tournament number four. That black licorice Ferrari was an absolute beast. And Stella Beans knew just how to handle that beast, except on the last race. It's got the speed, it's got the handling, it's got the power, all the elements you need to be King of the Mountain. It's King of the Mountain Tournament number four, qualifying race 14. First up, we have Philip Philip driving in La LD Sun. It's a 1971 Datsun 510 wagon weighing 81.9 grams. So is that first name Philip, last name Philip? It could be Philly Philip. Or Philip Hillop. Who knows? Then we have T Day driving in SBG. The SBG is an eight crate weighing 94.1 grams. I wonder what SBG stands for. It's probably best that we don't even ask. Okay, super big guy. I doubt it stands for that. Then we have Mapaco driving in the Nuglet. That is a Datsun Bluebird 510 weighing 81.4 grams. Hmm, what is a Nuglet? Again, just, just don't. Let's see, Urban Dictionary no, says... No, no, no Urban Dictionary definition. A smaller form of a Nugget. Okay, well that wasn't that bad. And finally we have Robin McKenzie driving in No Money Problems. I guess not, he rolled up the King of the Mountain in a Rolls Royce. It's a silver shadow weighing 92.2 grams. That is classy. It's an odd choice for a street race, but okay. I hope he's got good insurance. Here we go. As usual, the drivers will compete in four races. The top driver will advance on to King of the Mountain Tournament number four. And they're off. Philip Philip taking the early lead, followed by Mapaco. Those are the two Dotson drivers in tonight's race. Philip in the 510 wagon, Mapaco in the Bluebird. TJ currently in third, followed by Robin McKenzie. Here comes Philly Phil. Philip will take an easy win on race one. TJ with a pass right before the line takes second place. That puts Mapaco in third and Robin McKenzie coming in fourth. Here's another look at that pass by TJ. Mapaco goes right, TJ goes left and overtakes him right before the finish line. Man, it's really groovy. What the hell was that? I tried doing what you said. I, I told you I don't have the voice for it. Okay, my bad. I guess I had some unrealistic expectations of your ability to be cool. I can be cool. We got Robin McKenzie out front in the Rolls Royce. TJ right on his tail, literally. Come on, you can't hit a Rolls Royce. Hey, this is King of the Mountain. If you bring your car here, expect some damage. That's going to cost to buff that out. Robin McKenzie takes the win, followed by TJ. 
Those two are now tied with six points. Oh, what happened to Phillip? He gets stuck with Mapako over on McClyde straight. Let's see the replay. Some good driving there by Robin McKenzie. I thought that Rolls Royce was going to be slow. I'm sure he's got it tuned up for the race. Right there, you can see Mapako and Phillip getting tangled up together for that double DNF. We still got two to go. Robin McKenzie on the front right, Mapako on the front left. Right now, the scores are very close, at least for the top three drivers. It's a close one between Robin and Mapako. A Rolls Royce versus a Datsun. Not a race I ever expected oh, to see. Oh no, there's more damage to that car. I'm sure they can get that dent out. He's gonna have an expensive bill by the end of the night. Robin McKenzie, once again, all alone on the track, headed to the finish line, and he will take a second win in the Rolls Royce of all cars tonight. Two wins in a row, he's doing a great job so far. Mapako takes second place on that race. Philip Philip takes third, and TJ gets a big old DNF. Not good with only one race to go. That will put Robin McKenzie in the lead in points. He has 11. That is four points over the second place driver, Philip Philip. So Robin McKenzie is one race away from getting that Rolls Royce into the King of the Mountain tournament. Yes, he is. Wow. And here we go, race four. We have Mapako on the front right in the white Datsun, and Philip Philip starting off on the front left in the 510 wagon. The leader, Rob McKenzie, starting off in the back row. It's a close race down the first straight. Philip Philip with a slight lead. Mapako pulls ahead. It's a back and forth now. Philip's out in front. Uh -oh. He spins out. There's going to be a lot of dents in that Rolls Royce. Philip going reverse, uh -oh. and they all come to a stop. Well, that was a wild ride. The drivers will restart that race starting from the same positions. That was some great back and forth racing between Mapako and Philip Philip. Right here, Philip decides to try to cut off Mapako, and that did not end well for anybody. Look at that Robin McKenzie. He has such a classy vehicle, but he's still right out there swapping paint with the rest of them. Well, we would expect no less from drivers in King of the Mountain. Here we go with the restart of race four. Once again, Mapako and Philip in the front row. Robin McKenzie in the back row with a four point lead over Philip Philip. This time, Mapako starts out in the lead. But here comes Philip Philip on the outside. Mapako still has the edge. Philip Philip passes. He wants that win. Everyone makes it past turn two fine this time. It is Philip, Mapako, and McKenzie. Here they come down the final straight. Here they come. Philip will take the win, but that will not be enough. Oh, wow. Because Robin McKenzie will be moving on to King of the Mountain tournament number four. The Rolls Royce joins King of the Mountain tournament number four and it has absolutely no chance of winning. We don't know that the tournament has not even started. No chance. I think you're being unfair. Let's see where he qualifies on the list. Look at that, he has a 17.962 second time. That's about 18 seconds. Well, he's currently in ninth place, so he is not the slowest. And as I like to say, anything can happen in King of the Mountain. Can I get a raise? Correction, almost anything can happen in King of the Mountain. That is messed up. He'll get over. It's King of the Mountain Tournament number four, qualifying race 15. First up, we have Akio A driving in Fair Z. The Fair Z is a Nissan Fair Lady Z weighing 80.5 grams. Then we have Tank Krauk driving in Total Collapse. The Total Collapse is a 1969 Mustang Mach 1 weighing 91.6 grams. Total Collapse, that's such a fitting name for 2D, a... don't even get started with that. Then we have Kid Badburn driving in Ghost Drifter. The Ghost Drifter is a Dodge Challenger drift car weighing 80.1 grams. And last up, it's Sally Fox driving in the Fox Box. The Fox Box is a 1992 Ford Mustang weighing 96.3 grams. So we have two Mustangs, a Dodge, and a Nissan. One of these things is not like the others. It's actually fitting since our other tournament is American Muscle versus Japanese Tuners. The drivers will compete in four races. The winner advances on to King of the Mountain tournament number four. And they are off. Akio and Tank in the front row. Tank now out in the lead. Here they come out of turn one. Sally Fox right behind Tank. Fox runs into Akio, and there goes Kid Badburn. We got Tank. Oh, what Down was goes that? Tank. <laughs> he gets shoved off the road. Oh man, this is too good. Akio now has the lead, and will take the win on race one, followed by Sally Fox and Kid Badburn. Okay, 3D, I know I said I would not say anything bad about Mustangs in tonight's race. Yes, we have an agreement. But look at that right there. A picture says a thousand words. If that image right there is not a thesis, 
of the Ford Mustang. I don't know what it is. Okay, so I guess you're technically not bad mouthing the Mustang. I don't need to. Look at the replay. Oh, man. <laughs> not a good start for Tank. That was a total collapse. Akio just pushes him off the road right into that tree. Can we please see that just, just one more time? Okay, we'll watch it one more time. But yes. Be mindful of your comments, please. I will. I, I totally will. Okay, look at that right there. And here comes my favorite part right here. Boom! <laughs> I love it. Here we go with race two. Tank back out in the lead. Sally Fox on his side. Sally Fox pulling ahead. Nice overtake by Sally. Tank bouncing all over the place. He needs to get off the road. Here comes Sally rounding the final corner. Look at Tank. He's a madman. He really is all over the place here. Pulls it in backwards. Sally Fox takes her first win of the night. That will put her on top of the scoreboard with eight points. Akio and Kid Badburn get stuck at the entrance of turn three. That is going to be a DNF for both drivers. This was a nice overtake right here. Sally Fox on the inside. That right there is how you get it done. I don't know what's going on with Tank Kralk, but he needs to get it together because he is all over the track. You know, I think I know what it is. 2D, we are not going no, to. No, no, I don't think it's the car this time. I think he may have been sipping a little you-know-what before the race. Oh, okay. Well, he should not be doing that. Typical Mustang owner. The views of 2D do not represent the 3D Bot Maker channel. Oh, come on. You've got to stop with the it's hate, man. It's all love. That's love. Look at Sally Fox. She's doing great. Sally Fox is doing quite well. She's in the lead. Look at Tank. He's out of control. Yeah, we need to get him off the track. That's what Akio was trying to do in race one. There's Sally. Oh, ah! I love him, Mustangs. <laughs> Tank Kralk. This is too much. What is going on? Oh, man, the entertainment. Someone needs to get him out of here. I think he may win the award for the most unstable driver in tournament number four. And somehow he's still doing better than Kid Badburn. Well, Kid shouldn't be in the race. It's not a kid. I mean, you know, Kid could be a, a goat. Never mind. That is two wins for Sally Fox. Look at that. I think Akio has it out for Tank Kralk. There could be some bad blood there. I'm sure there is after that wreck. We might as well watch that one more time. Yes. Here comes Tank. He wipes himself out again all on his own and then get slammed by Akio. Well, I guess you have to give Tank some credit. Oh, he's going to need a lot of credit after all these wrecks. He gets knocked down, but he keeps getting back up again. That's only because the track crew keeps rolling his car back over on its wheels. Well, that's true. Here we go at the final race. Sally Fox in the lead on the scoreboard. She has 13 in the green Mustang. Akio is in second place with seven points. That means this race will go to Sally Fox, regardless of the results on this last one. I am more interested in seeing if Tank Kralk can wreck again. Well, he is good at doing that. Kid Badburn with the lead. Here comes Sally Fox. Sally Fox chasing Kid Badburn past the finish line. Kid Badburn takes the win on the final race. But Sally Fox is your overall winner of the night and will be advancing on to King of the Mountain Tournament number four. Great job by Sally Fox. She had some very stable driving. You know, I made a lot of fun of the Mustang, but Sally Fox's driving makes the Mustang look good. It's King of the Mountain Tournament number four. Qualifying race 16. Max Zilla is driving in the Dissident. The Dissident is a Toyota Supra Turbo weighing 108 grams. Then we have Misha A driving in Not Your Mama's Birdseed. Not Your Mama's Birdseed is a 67 Pontiac Firebird weighing 79 grams. We've got Cool Caleb 63 driving in Knight Rider 2.0. The Knight Rider 2.0 is a Dodge Charger drift car weighing 65.4 grams. And last up, we have C.W. Smith driving in Chromatic Car. Chromatic Car is a 07 Ford Mustang weighing 75.9 grams. Here we go with race one, Maxzilla in the red car, Misha in the blue. It says here Maxzilla is driving for red pill racing. Well, that might explain why that car is so fast. He is gone. Misha A in distant second. Oh yeah, that thing is fast. There goes Maxzilla around the final corner. A little hiccup there, but Maxzilla takes the win easily with a track time of 16.384 seconds. What kind of car was that again? Maxzilla's car? Yeah. That is a Toyota Supra. Toyota Supra. Okay, got it. Are you adding that to your holiday wish list? Uh, maybe. A great start for Maxzilla. He completely dominated that race. Here we go with race two. We have Misha A on the front right in the blue car and C.W. Smith on the front left in the black 
with gray and are those flames? I think there's some purple on that car. Here they go, they're off. Misha A in the lead, followed closely behind by Maxilla. Maxilla doing some bump drafting. I'm not sure if that was drafting or pushing. Here they go through turn two. Whoa! Oh, there goes Misha. Misha is out, Maxilla takes over the lead. Everyone else is way behind. And Maxilla flies past the finish line to take his second win of the night. He is crushing it out there. It looks like he is the only one to pass the finish line. That's going to be a DNF for everyone else. Misha A had that one, but fell apart on McClyde straight. Here's the replay. Misha A bounces off the wall, coming out of that turn, hits the left side, flips over, and that just opened up the track for Maxilla to fly on through. Very impressive driving by Maxilla. He's got the speed and the handling. Here we go with race three. Maxilla in the lead with 10 points. We've got C.W. Smith starting on the front right and Cool Caleb 63 on the front left. Cool Caleb 63 in the front. He's getting a push from Maxilla. Maxilla is not playing games out there. Maxilla closing in on Cool Caleb. There's some contact. Maxilla swerving. Cool Caleb still in the front. Here they come around the final corner. And race three will go to Cool Caleb 63. Followed by Maxilla, C.W. Smith, and we are missing Misha A. Looks like she wrecked coming off of turn one. Misha A flipped upside down on the exit of turn one. I thought Maxilla was gonna get the pass on that last race. He was really going after Cool Caleb 63 aggressively. He had some swerving coming out of turn two. That slowed him down, giving Cool Caleb the win. If you look at the scoreboard, Maxilla has 13 points. Cool Caleb 63 is in second with seven. That means Maxilla will be qualifying for King of the Mountain Tournament number four. Yeah, if you look at that scoreboard, Maxilla is clearly outclassing all the other drivers tonight. Both Misha A and C.W. Smith only have three points so far for the night. That is sad. Maxilla back out in the lead. If he can keep it straight, there should be no problem in him winning this last race. It's already over. Maxilla coming down the final straight. And Maxilla wins the last race. And we'll be advancing on to King of the Mountain Tournament number four. Another 16 second track time there. Maxilla ends the race with 18 points. That's 11 points over second place. That's a big win for Maxilla. Maxilla will be the final qualifier for King of the Mountain Tournament number four. That can only mean one thing. It's tournament time. Tournament time is finally here. We've gone through 64 cars. These are the top 16. They'll be battling it out on the track to determine who will get a shot against the king, king of, of the, the mountain. mountain.